Welcome back. So we just got through watching the brand new Castlevania anime released by Netflix and if you know anything about us, it was destined to happen and we were destined to talk about it. After all, when it comes to Castlevania, it's definitely one of the most well-beloved series of our entire library. We've done videos on it, we've cosplayed as these characters, we've done so much with Castlevania, it's ingrained in our childhoods and our lives forever. So what did we think about the new Netflix series. Well, we knew it was in production since 2005. It was rumored to be a live-action movie at some point. It had been in de development hell and in a case of turnaround for aeons, <laughs> what it feels like. And so, finally, after so much trying, it finally happened. So, we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> so this is a uh, four-episode series. Uh, season one, kind of a mini-series kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it basically follows the storyline that's pretty common to Castlevania, which is a storyline that pretty much focuses on uh, Dracula's Curse up to Rondo of Blood to Symphony of the Night. We kind of, assume. We assume. It has kind of that same kind of style. Yeah, it definitely is without a doubt following the story of those, those two. This one. <laughs> yeah, because Dracula's those, Curse. Those are the ones, I think those are the ones that have gotten the most uh, storyline. Even uh, Curse of Darkness, which is the offshoot of Castle, yeah. uh, Dracula's Curse, was kind of that. Um, Artistically, it was where Symphony of, the, Symphony of the Night really put its foot down and... When you think of something, you think of that, that style. Yeah, that the pale faces, the very beautiful art texture, even from Lament of Innocence with the holding of the whip. That became the staple of the series, and even the animation tries to mimic that a little bit, especially with Ayukai. Right. Um, uh, so, the first episode is all set up, and it's focused mm -hmm. on Dracula. Yeah, at first it was a little strange because we, it didn't it didn't immediately click with me that oh yeah this is Lisa from Symphony of the Night when you have that whole bad dream with Alucard yeah and it plays out pretty much the same where she's burned at the stake for being accused of a witchcraft because she wants to use science to help people and move the world forward into the age of science where where it should otherwise it'll be forever stuck in medieval times and. You know how Salem witches and so forth and such which were just burned for accusations even if they were false. That leads to, when she gets burned at the stake, that leads to Dracula saying, okay, F everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything! Yeah. And, and even then, he was kind of merciful. A lot of people had a problem with that because they think Dracula shouldn't be a sympathetic character, but he's kind of already always has been. Yeah. You know, he wasn't born evil. There was something that happened that made him turn against God and turn against... Mm -hmm. um, the world of man. Now, of course, we don't know the history before which, because when when the show just starts, we already know he's Dracula. Yeah. He's Dr like Vlad Dracula Tabesh. Right. And we don't really know much about his history beyond that, as much as he might have just been Vlad the Impaler, and everything you can imagine history telling you was probably true. We see uh, Trevor at the end of the first episode, mm -hmm. and the rest of the, the three episodes basically follow him. It's funny how you see him, he's kind of like a drunkard at first, kind of a guy who's down his luck. A very interesting <laughs> take, instead of the Belmonts being totally pro-Christian, and uh, which they still are, but they're not into false religion. He ends up making clever. a deal with the church, kind of, uh, even though he doesn't kind of want to, he kind of does... And, uh, what I like about this is that uh, even though I do like stories that are gay, when you have a clear-cut good guy mm -hmm. and a clear-cut bad guy like Star Wars, you know, the rebels and the dark side, I like stories where you have a hero and then he looks to the left, he sees Dracula, and he looks to the right, he sees a corrupt church, and like, okay, I don't trust any of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All y'all are just... <laughs> I'm on my own. I'm, yeah, just, exactly. I'm just passing through. Yeah, I like those um, stories. And... Like, Trevor, he does care for the people, but if the people are not going to do anything... And they did put a quote in the series that also was used in a form in Symphony of the Night, is that the only way evil can win is for good men to do nothing. Right. And so that's what pretty much Trevor felt. Like, if people are not going... And Dracula kind of actually said the same thing. Like, people could have rose up. They could have said, no, we're not going to live like animals, but they still burn my wife. Trevor sort of has the same thing, where it's like, the people could have rose up against this, all this false stuff. They could have helped us out, but no, they're not going to want... They're not going to ask for my help. They don't want it. Screw them. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Dracula, I don't hate him. <laughs> I have no illusions. He's not a nice guy. I don't hate him. <laughs> No, but to totally everything he's doing is completely wrong. Yes, but I'm not... I still hate him. Yeah, one, one of the really cool scenes is when the demons finally invade the town of Gresha where all hell breaks loose. Uh, the Christians that are, like, banishing and beating, like, the Seekers, everybody else who is, like, who they deem as the cause because, you know, man, they have to have something to blame. Right. If it isn't rap music, it's demon. 
Right. Uh, <laughs> so finally, the demons go inside the church and confront them d directly, and they flat out tell them, "God's not here. He's not on your side. He knows what you did." And that that's com that, that's really amazing. That whole scene was amazing. But we love you because you're the one that brought us. Yeah. Here. yeah. But because you made us, let me kiss you. Yeah, and that kills him. <laughs> yeah. uh, it definitely lives up to the gore and the violence and all that stuff. What I really love is, is, has, is how the demons have a complete sense of humor. Like, they're tying organs, like decorations and heads everywhere. Now, one thing about the show is that it's not an anime, technically. No. It's an American-produced, American-made show mm -hmm. with some anime tendencies. It, yeah, it's or, inspired it's, by yeah, a lot yeah, of... Yeah, that's what I was looking for. There's, it, it takes inspirations from a lot of things, from the Hammer Horror films, from the classic good old days of... A Bella Lugosi, Boris Karloff, because some of the people that are working on the show grew up with those and they watched them. Um, they also wa like watched and read things like Berserk from an uh, from anime, like very very specific animes from Japan, maybe even Helsing. And they took a lot of cues and a lot of ideas uh, from them to in order to create their show. And what's also really cool is that while they were also making the show, apparently they had an NES and a copy of Dracula's Curse to play while they were creating the show uh, so that they could take ideas from the game and be like hmm. so and honestly that's probably how they were faithful in Sypha being a stone statue you and, see the fight with the Cyclops which yeah. is directly from that game mm -hmm. um, you see Alucard appear at the end and he's as glorious and as beautiful as ever and we get to see <laughs> a really great fight scene and just a taste of how awesome the Belmont's the Belmonts are with the whip and the way that he threw the whip and like used his two fingers to like slide it across the whip and snap at Alucard right in the, right in the middle of the air. Like, oh man, it's like every time he whips something, you can feel the impact that this thing has. When it hits you, it leaves devastating damage. If you're not losing a finger, you're losing an eye. <laughs> you're losing something. <laughs> it's crazy how much damage this whip does. Now, Grant's not in it, and I'm okay with that. Because I believe they're saying it's saving him for the second season, which thankfully we're going to get. It's going to be eight episodes. Yes. I think if we had Grant, we'd have to add, add another character we have to spend some time we with. Might, we, we might have had to add We two have more to episodes. introduce Dracula. We introduce yes. Trevor. We introduce Sypha and her, and her group. Yeah, the Seekers. And then we, and then we, yeah, the Seekers. And then we, uh, we're, we're like the only, like, Motivations. Good, well, halfway decent humans are, are willing to do something. We had to have motivations and right. and we had to have structure behind the world that we're in. And you had Al Yukari finally show up in the end. So yeah. And then they show and so it, it, it's all set up. Nothing really gets resolved in a way. Not no. Really. It's this really is all about the setup. Right. So ultimately, what do you think of the think of this? Um, I thought it was truly fantastic. I mm -hmm. thought it does live up to what Castlevania had become because. In the early days of Castlevania, I'm talking, I'm talking like the NES era, like, there really was no status quo way. Like, nothing was status quo. Zelda 2, status quo? No. Zelda 2, Simon's Quest, Metroid Things 2. Things didn't get status quo until the Rondo of Blood, Blood Symphony of the Night. Yeah, like, they were getting their feet wet. They were trying to see what works, what sticks, and it was right. really around the Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night era where they really struck gold. Right, and that's kind of been the, the mark of it, all up until not Lord, Lord yeah. of the Shadow trilogy, which was kind of its own thing. Yeah, not just in its gameplay style, but artistic fashion. Yes. Yeah, because like, ever since Symphony of the Night uh, introduced its very pale character's artistic look with its very, very beautiful designs, every game since then has pretty much tried to follow that trend, and that's become a staple of the series. When you see that kind of artwork on those characters, you immediately click in your head, Castlevania, because that's what it's known for. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, some might uh, differ on that opinion, thinking that the older games are... <laughs> you know, if we're not going to get um, actual Castlevania games from Konami, mm -hmm. who knows what the hell they're doing right now, other than cheap, sex-exploited show machines, machines at, least, at least license their titles to other entities and let them do it. You know, if we can't get Castlevania in game form anymore... Well, let's get at least an anime or sort of... Yeah, and unfortunately, this might be true, because I've heard this a lot. Uh, unfortunately, the Japanese people, and I'm not saying all Japanese people are like this, I'm not stereotyping anybody or categorizing people, but apparently in business, like, Japanese people are very prideful, and they would rather fail than succeeding doing something... I can see that. Then succeed well, by I know, I, I know some businessmen here in America that are the same way, because it's all about ego, but... Yeah. I highly recommend this if you're a Castlevania fan. I think this is uh, 
pretty faithful. I think this is well Oh, done. yeah. It takes liberties where it I, needs to. Granted, these are NES games that we're following right now. I think video games are better suited for series uh, than yeah. movies, because series, they're allowed to breathe more. Yes, um, definitely. Yeah, I think the animation is beautiful. I thought, the, I thought it was all put together very nicely, and I definitely recommend it. I enjoyed watching it. Castlevania, Netflix. It truly shows that you can take a video game adaptation or a video game series or... And you can you can run with it. You can yeah. turn it into a series. And I think this was a really good time for it to do it. Because now we have shows like Walking Dead and Game of Thrones where mm -hmm. they push the limits on what you can show for television. Right. And a show like Castlevania, now this is the perfect time to do it. Well, that's why they move... That's why kind of regular TV is kind of dying. Because all these shows are moving to HBO or moving to cable or moving to Netflix because they have more freedom. Mm -hmm. And this is a very gory... <laughs> game. This is not this, for kids. This is for us. This is for the fans of Castlevania. Who grew up with Who Castlevania up. back in the day yeah. and loved Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood and you know. all those Castlevania Chronicles. Yeah, it's not for all, for all the people who don't like the retro stuff or you know, or all about the new things. This ain't for you. This is for us. <laughs> no, this is... Yeah. We cannot stress this enough. This is not for you to watch with your children. There is a lot of cursing. There is such gore. That it's it's crazy. I'm uh, pretty. Sure, I would not be surprised if nudity and sex comes pretty soon. <laughs> it seems I'm, like it would fit right in. I'm pretty sure we're <laughs> not going to see Trevor's dingling, <laughs> but we might see some action. Last thing I want to mention are the Easter eggs. I thought it was pretty cool that um, on Trevor's uh, chest you get to see the Belmont the Belmont Felmont, the Belmont family crest, which is directly related to Castlevania Lords, Shadow. Lords of Shadow. Exactly, you got it. Um, then this, I think, might have been a little reaching, but I thought it would have been an, uh, an easy call-out, is when Trevor is in the town of Gratiot, and he passes on the bridge, and he looks over, and he sees that there's nothing but a river of deceased corpses and bodies, that those bodies could later become the monster Legion. Maybe. Uh, the terrible Christian priest who is all around evil and corrupt, wanting to take religion as in, into in his own hands, and sort of, like, making himself this esteemed god figure who was killed by the demon, might come back later as the Dark Priest's shaft. Mm -hmm. um, Alucard was using moves from... Alucard, who fought Trevor in the final act, was using moves taken straight out of Symphony of the Night. Uh, the down forward attack, which might have been called Dark Metamorphosis, where it's like you get this red glow around you and you just whoosh, teleport across the, the screen to do a couple of quick slashes. That was really cool. A um, lot of call-outs, like Sypha being turned like stoned at the beginning, of, just <laughs> like in Castlevania Three, when you yeah. beat the Cyclops and you rescue her. Um, so yeah, a lot of Easter eggs. Even some of the scenery might have been some callbacks to some screenshots from video games that you might have played, and you might be able to catch them. So much cool stuff, and I cannot wait to see more. The only bad news is we're gonna have to wait for it. Of course, because it takes gonna, it's gonna take a while. But hey. We got something, and uh, these first four episodes, I think, are definitely worth the watch. Yeah, we were debating cosplaying for all of this, but this... <laughs> we just, we just, old, yeah. man. They're, 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 they're all being held together by strings right now. <laughs> yeah, we just kind of wanted to get it out there. Like, yeah, having grown up a Castlevania, <laughs> having grown up a Castlevania fan, I brought him into the yes, series yes, uh, later on down the line. Um, yeah, it, it is truly fantastic to see that finally, 30 years later, we finally, finally get to see a really cool representation on the big screen. We had Captain N, but... <laughs> Less said about that, the better. <laughs> yeah, so, Castlevania, the Netflix series. Truly fantastic adaptation. Congratulations to the guys responsible. You took the liberties where you needed to, but they stayed incredibly faithful to the source material. Clearly, a lot of heart and love went into creating this, and truly it is something special. Cannot wait to see more. I hope they deliver, and I hope they do right by the other characters and give us more Easter eggs. I would like to see the pork chop incorporated into it. I know it sounds dumb, but if you think about it, it can be done pretty well just by having it. Maybe, like, if you strike the wall, maybe there's a, a, hi a hideaway cubby that you can just hide yourself. Like, if there's a bad time, then there's food in there. Like, hey, we just kind of keep food in here for safekeeping. <laughs> See how easy that is? Just little things like that. So... Let us know, guys. What did you think of the Castlevania series? Did you go and see it? Did we spoil anything for you? What did you think? We'd love to hear and talk about it. Castlevania is practically a big part of our lives, so if you want to converse about it, please do so in the comments. We cannot wait to hear it. Meanwhile, I've been your host, William Morris. I'm your co-host, Eugene Morris. And we'll see you next time in Season 2.